fun that you can go back and do it uh, at your own pace or maybe teach a friend, right? And speaking of go back and maybe do something with a friend, at this time last year, when we started doing these things online, this is one of the landscapes that we did. So I called this one Desert Nights, and it's a take on Van Gogh's Starry Night, right? So you can go back at the, at the YouTube channel and look for the pictures, and, uh, and you can decide which one you want to do, because I have done quite a few uh, videos, and I'm sure you'll find a subject that you like. All of them are a little different. Sometimes it's an animal, sometimes it's a landscape or a still life. Today we're doing a landscape again. And uh, this is one of the most, um, I won't say simplest, but it's less challenging for if you're a beginner to do a landscape. So always start with the landscape when you're, when you're first uh, getting your feet wet with acrylics. When I say acrylics, that's the kind of paint we're using today. I have been teaching art, oh gosh, I don't know how many years now, uh, to all ages and abilities, and I enjoy different mediums, and this is one of my favorite mediums. I paint on small canvases like this with the acrylic paint that I'm about to show you, hidden on my palette here, and I also paint it on walls. So it's a wonderful medium uh, to uh, explore with paint. It's a little forgiving because you can always paint over it if you don't really like something. It dries pretty quick, unlike oil and watercolor. Yeah, can't quite fix anything with that. So this is a good one if you're a beginner. If you're an advanced, you can take this as advanced as you'd like. I'm going to try to give you some tips and tools along the way. You're just going to paint along with me. Um, I do have. I did have. If you saw the supply list online or on my Facebook page, you saw exactly what you needed to have. So you need to have some brushes handy right i've got some brushes da, da, da. and uh there's a variety it doesn't the thing i really think about brushes is the fact that i like to have one that feels really rough like a makeup brush it's a bristle brush and uh it will hold a little bit more paint when we're starting off and then i like to have one that's a little softer Right, it feels like, um, actually this is the one that feels like your makeup brush. This one feels like hog hair, right? Because it is, like it's really rough. And this one feels real smooth uh, for doing your detail work. It won't hold as much paint. You could have a round tip and you can do flat. I usually use the flats when I'm working with man-made objects. And I usually use the round one when I'm doing uh, organic and nature because there's nothing straight in nature. So that's pencil. You could have a chalk or a piece of charcoal to draw with if you want, or you can just draw with your paint or a pencil. I have a canvas here. This one um, is not too big. It's manageable in the hour and 15 minutes that we have together. I have my sample here that I did for the class, and I'll talk to you about that in a second. I have my paint. I like to put the paint uh, on a plate. This becomes my palette, or it could be your fan, depending on how warm it gets. It's pretty hot here right now, this time of year. And uh, I like to put my um, cool colors on one side, my warm colors on another side. And you can usually put white in the middle or you know, off by itself. And you're going to need water. This happens to be my drinking water. But you also need to have your yucky waters. I'm just going to dump this in here. Now, this is going to become my yucky water. I will not want to drink out of that. And as to make yucky water, that's what I'm going to use to wash my brushes off. Yes? Right? And speaking of washing brushes, you're going to want to have some napkins handy. And after you swirl that brush around in the water, you just go back and forth till it comes clean. Now. That's all our little housekeeping uh, um, announcements. If you need to talk to me, I'll turn around every once in a while and see if I can't see something in the chat. If not, feel free to email me afterwards um, if I missed you or you have a real question about what we used and uh, if maybe you have some comments you want to make. You can reach me 
and just put Deborah at DebraGullyArt.com. So just put Deborah at, which is my email address, right before my website, and you'll get me. So what are we painting today? Are y'all ready to do this? So I have been thinking about monsoons. I don't know about you guys, but I would love for that rain to just come out of nowhere and just give us a nice clean bath, you know, clean everything out, clean the air off. And we've been in a drought for quite some time, so it would really be nice uh, if those monsoons would come in. So what I've depicted here and is a uh, nice sunset coming in that's, bit, that's there, but then I have this these dark clouds rolling in, right? So they're coming in and uh, they're gonna dump a bunch of rain on this. This was taken uh, at, at the uh, lakes where I live. And of course um, it inspired me, but it, this scene here was inspired by one of my art students. He's now a senior in high school, but when he was a little bit um, younger, he had brought in a photograph that he'd taken at the lake and we painted this together. So what they call when everything is dark is a silhouette. So all of this stuff is dark and then the sky is what is amazing and becomes the showpiece in your composition. So let's just get started, okay? All right, I'm gonna take my charcoal pencil, maybe you have a paintbrush or a piece of chalk, and we're gonna define the horizon line. And the horizon line happens to be where the sky meets the ground. So that means that right here is my horizon line. Notice that my horizon line is bumpy. That means I just have trees or bushes or buildings. There's something going on over here. My horizon line is not where the water is, okay? So it's where my sky meets the, the ground or meets, in this case, my uh, tree line. So I never like to cut it off right in the middle of the paper. One, you do have, you, you would end up kind of just making mostly less sky, all that less beautiful sky that we really want to have. And then there's something quite wrong when you cut the canvas in half. So I'm going to go three quarters of the way down or maybe just a two thirds of the way down. And I'm gonna do like a bumpy horizon line. And it's gonna get taller like the mountains, stray mountains over here, okay? So it's not smack dab in the middle, it's a little off, all right? Now, that's where I'm gonna have the black silhouette happening. I'm also gonna have the water line. Right, so I'm gonna draw a water line way back in the distance because these trees are really small in the distance. When you're doing landscape, you have to think about things up close and things far away. So notice how I'm kind of making my water line choppy, right? It's not a straight line. Remember I said nothing in nature is really straight. So this is a windy day, the monsoons are coming in, and so my line is going to be a little crazy, right? You can make it as, as choppy and wavy as you'd like. At the bottom, I'm going to have another line, and this line will be the shoreline. I know you're all thinking, when are we going to paint? But this is really important that you establish the composition and then where you're going to place the paint. You don't want to just start painting and then you like, oh my gosh, I made too much black here, and too much blue here. And then you have to wait for it to dry if you want to cover over it. So it's good to have a plan. Even if you change it, it's good to have a plan. So I'm going to put a shoreline right here, like I'm walking along the edge of the lake. So I have shoreline, water line, tree line, and this is all going to be my beautiful sky from sunset and that monsoon just, just blowing in. Now, the trick with the landscape is that you always want to make sure that the thing along that horizon, in this case my tree line, is going to be the lightest part of the sky. So this is really, really light. I'm not going to worry about clouds right now, none of that. We're going to work from the lightest value being this kind of whitish yellow 
to a, like a almost like a tanger, a melon color, maybe a cantaloupe color. And then I'm going to go to some yellows, real earthy yellows, some oranges. I'm going to show you what happens when blue mixes with yellow. We're going to get kind of a little green flash going on here. I don't know if you've ever heard about the green flash. And then blue, and then a really deeper blue. The deeper blue is toward outer space. Don't start with the darkest along your horizon. So this is how it's going to force your eye into the painting by, your, by tricking it with value. Okay, here we go. I've got some white, so I could just start with some white, but I'm going to put a little bit of this lemon yellow with it. You might only have the uh, ochre yellow, you know, you might just have an earthier yellow, and that's fine. If you put a lot of white with it, you're going to get a nice lemony yellow. So all I'm going to do is add white as a tint to make things lighter. So right along that horizon, I'm going to make things lighter. If you're drawing with charcoal at the beginning, you'll notice that some of that charcoal is getting into your paint because you do want to cover over the charcoal line. But that's okay because when you come back and do your black silhouette, you'll be able to cover over some of those charcoal lines that you don't really love. I'm also going to, let me pick this up, get it closer to you. I'm also going to cover the edges of my canvas in case I never frame this. So go ahead as we're working and wrap to the edges like that. Yes. It's been so fun doing these classes virtually with you guys. I'm excited. I have an announcement to make soon. So stay tuned. Okay. Now we're going to go on to like that that um, melon color, almost like cantaloupe color. So I have a little bit of orange I poured here. You might not have orange. All you might have is red and yellow, which are primary colors. If you mix your red and yellow together, you're going to get orange. Speaking of that, you, what kind of paints do I use? I try to go with some of my professional paints just because I do it for a living. But if you need student, if you have student grade paints, like, I don't know, look in your craft box and you've got, you know, some of these tubes of craft paint, you know, the little small ones, maybe the ones that came in some kit with no label on it. You can paint any with anything today. Um, so it, especially when you're learning and practicing. I see we have some kids with us today, so that really makes me excited. I love it. I love it. Okay, I'm making a little melon. I didn't wash my brush, all right, because I'm just going to work from light to dark. There's no need to wash my brush right now. So I just took my brush and put a tad of that orange, and I'm making a cute little melon color. Looks yummy for summer. Looks like a dream sickle, you know? And I'm going to put some of that in my sky. Oh my gosh, doesn't that look yum? That just looks beautiful. Ignore the black right now. Don't get into your black right now because that will muddy up your color. We have to put this on first. Yeah, everybody's working hard. I see you guys. You're working hard. Let's see. I have one chat. I'm going to see if I can't see what it is. The question might be here. Oh, it's just that um, the city put in my email address, which is awesome. So you guys can email me if you need anything. That's awesome. I know I try to check my chat, but sometimes I get so into painting that I don't look and see if there's a question down there. Okay, now for my next layer, I'm not going to wash my brush. I am just going to put on a little white on top of that melon. Every time I do this painting, it looks a little different and yours will look different too. You know, some people don't like to do paint parties because they don't want to do the same thing that I'm doing. 
but in reality, what you create is going to look uniquely you. And I encourage you at the end to share your art. We do have an online virtual gallery and you can e send it to the email that's in the chat, um, Deborah at DebraGoleyArt.com or send it directly to the city who gave you the link and uh, they will share your artwork. You, you can be anonymous, you don't have to put your name, but give your work a title, it's fun. Wouldn't that be cool? We could have a whole gallery of monsoons in there. It just, it would really, really be fun. Okay, I'm putting a little more orange this time. I feel like I'm more in an orange mood today. Again, I'm gonna cover the sides. Just kind of streaking the sky like it was painted sunset. Uh, this time I'm gonna use my earthy yellow and less white. So I'm going to put a little white with it and I'm going to do the next layer. You see that? You could be using your hog's hair brush, the bristle brush, or you could go ahead and just use whatever you have for this landscape. It's a little bright. I'm going to dirty it up a little bit. When I say dirty it up, if I add a, a tinge of orange to it, it just makes it more of a yellow orange, dirties it just a bit so it's not so bright right yet. All right, now I think I'm going to use more orange this time and less white. So I'm dipping into my orange. It's kind of nice when you have it all on a plate, right, so that you can you can play with your mixing. And I'm just going to put a little bit of orange across there. I think that sunsets are probably one of the most painted subjects. No matter where you live. At least there, I know they're the most photographed, right? It's just so beautiful. Okay. Now in this one, you can see I get a whole lot of orange right in the middle here. This one's less orange, it's got more yellow. I did two different versions here. So let's see, what am I feeling like today? Maybe we'll put some of that bright, or maybe the sun is back there. A little bright, orange, bright yellow there. You can always tone it down later if it's too bright at the end. Now I'm going to use a little more orange. I love it that we have all ages joining us today. In the summertime, we do. We get, we get more of the school age with us um, just because you guys are off school and you have a little time. And why not? try a new skill and you don't usually in the school system you don't have much time to paint they have you doing more drawing because by the time you get all your paints out it's time to go i do teach classes to all ages in groups or individual so if you find you really enjoy this you can either sign up for a class or you can look back at the YouTube videos with the city. Okay, I'm just kind of alternating here. I have the, the earthy yellow and I'm putting back some more orange. I don't think I'm gonna do a red. I think my orange is a nice red orange, but I do have this other color orange out of the can. I'm just gonna Pour some on here, see what it does. Well, looks pretty much like the one I already mixed up, right? That's what's nice about it. you realize, oh, I don't need all these colors. I can make it myself with just a few colors. So it's very similar, right? Look, is this almost similar to what I already made? So, so don't feel like you have to go out and buy every color to make the sunset. You just need your primary colors. And I added orange but you could make orange, right? 
Okay, so let's add a little more yellow. I want this next layer to be yellow, and I'm going to show you why. Because we're going to be adding blue. This time I'm going to wash my brush. I mean, I'm kind of dipping it in here. Now I'm going to dip it into the blue. I want my blue to be mixed with some white because I don't want to get too dark too fast. And I'm going to put it right over the wet yellow. And you're going to see what happens. In a flash, we get green. That's what happens. I love this. So you can see that green coming in because it's yellow and blue make green. Now I'm going to keep on working with the blue. I've got blue and white. I'm going to put that in next. No clouds yet. I'm going to wait for all this to dry and then I'm going to put the clouds over the top later. We call this painting wet on wet. So if you dip your white right into the white and you put it on the, the canvas that's already wet with blue, that's called painting wet on wet. Okay, I'm just going to keep on getting darker as I move up. If you're using a hog's hair brush, it will go on faster. You won't have to double dip all the time. That's crazy. Double dip is meant for like, you know, putting your vegetables in the dip twice. You can always extend paint too. Let's say you made a, a favorite color. You can extend it when you run out of it by just dipping your brush in a little water, right? And reactivating what's on there. So you can get enough of the same color that you really were enjoying and you just don't have enough more to put on. Okay, I'm gonna get really dark now. I think landscapes are so satisfying. They really are. They, um, when you don't have much time in the day and you just feel like painting, they, they are very rewarding very quickly. Now, my sky is very, very dark up here at the top. I am gonna get a little black out to add with my blue. Or I could use the opposite of blue on the color wheel and make my sky a little bit darker in value as I get to outer space. Does anybody know the opposite of blue? I'll give you a hint, it's on the canvas already. So that means it's on our palette. So if I take a little bit of orange with the blue, it's going to get a little darker. It might get too green. That's it depends on what kind of orange you have. They're not may not be totally opposite each other on your palette. So I'm gonna get a little bit of black. And when I say a little bit of black, I mean a little bit of black. Don't put a lot of black in your sky because then your silhouette won't, won't uh, be effective. So I've got a little black and I'm actually, you know what? I'm gonna pour it on a different plate. 
because this my black comes out really fast. And I'm just going to dip my brush in a tiny bit of black. And I'm literally going to mix it with some blue and put it into the sky. And it's going to get darker. So black is a shade. White is a tint. Wow, this is what I call there's a storm coming. Please, please. <laughs> My plants would love it. Okay, I'm, I'm painting the top too because I don't want to have to frame it. Framing can be very expensive or maybe you have an old frame, but it might take you a while to Put it all together so i just like to go ahead and finish off my paintings this is called a gallery wrapped canvas it means that it's stapled to the back but if you're not painting on a gallery wrapped maybe you're just that was a little mishap there my speaker fell over there oh. i was going to show you a board so the board actually Right? Can you can paint on that so it's not wrapped to the back. So you don't have to finish the edges and you can still frame it. Sorry about that little knock. I might have scared somebody. I know I scared my dog just now. Okay, so there's my sky. Da -da -da. Now, if you want to be more smooth with it, you know, you want to water it down and make it more um, atmospheric, hazy, you could do that. And, and by doing that, you would just add a little more moisture to your brush and you're just kind of going, it has to be still wet, really, the, the canvas for you to do that. But you could create a little bit more haziness or smoothed out. I'm not going to worry with it too much today because I'm about to add clouds and all that. So I'm not going to smooth all of that out. I want to have a lot of movement like these clouds are just rolling. In. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on the water. And that's going to give this enough time to dry before I put the clouds in. So let's go ahead and move to the water. So we're going to use that same blue. And here you can pretty much, you could, you could have it light blue near the shoreline. You could go light blue near the bottom of the tree line. You can see that I have light blue, a little light tealy blue here and really dark in the middle. On this one, I have mostly uh, a medium blue and one dark patch of blue on the right side. I'm just going to put some blue in there. Oh, I got a little too much white. This is where you're going to paint wet on wet. I want to reflect what's going on in the sky. So I don't want to have a very light blue lake. You want it to be a reflection of what's going on up above. Water is not blue. Like if you looked at your drinking water, it is not blue. It's a reflection of what's going on above or what's going on below the water. Could be very muddy water, could be rocky underneath. Uh, so you might have some green in your, in your water, but it is not colored. Well, unless you got a real contamination problem or something like that. So we are just going to make it more of a reflection of what's going on in the sky. This is a great day to paint. It's kind of cloudy out like it's about to 
It's like it's threatening to do something. So it's the perfect inspiration day to paint this. Don't forget your edges. I think I'm going to get all this medium blue on there and then I'm going to put a dark patch of blue with a little bit of black in it like we did in the sky. I'm also going to want to make my water choppy. You know, I want to make it um, like the weather is pushing all the water into white caps. Yes, I pick up my canvas from time to time to bring it closer to you and to show you how not to forget the edges. I hope you have some soothing music on in the background. I can't do music anymore. To, apparently that YouTube doesn't like all that um, music in the background unless you have prior permission to use something. And I like to play classical music when I paint. I like to use music that I'm not singing along to because uh, music and speech live in your left side and your creative side lives in your right brain. So right now I'm speaking, so I'm having to do both left and right. Uh, but it's nice to relax in your creative side and not have a lot of distraction. Okay, I know I'm touching on a lot of things today. Uh, so I'm going to put a little bit more white into the edge of the pond or the lake. And then I'm going to put a lot more darkness to my water. So again, I'm going to do a little tad of black on the end of my brush with my blue. And I'm going to make kind of a dark patch right here because it's going to reflect what's happening in the sky it's getting a little darker on this side so I want to make this side darker to match what I'm going to do over here it could just be that you put a second coat of blue over the first one And this side's a little bit lighter. And this side's a little bit darker. Make this a little bit darker. Okay, now what I'm going to do Oh my gosh, isn't that fun? That's really fun. I'm going to add a few white caps. So I'm going to wipe off my brush just a tad. And I'm going to have some light blue. So I've got some white and some blue right here. And I'm just going to streak a couple of, look, I'm just kind of flicking my wrist. To make a few waves. In the water, some movement in the water. Don't worry, if you get a little wave happy, you can paint over it, no big deal. Some of them, you're gonna love, some waves are better than others. <laughs> -da -da. Oh, wow. Okay, now let's move on back to the sky. And we're going to put in some of those pretty clouds. This time you do want to wash your brush off or you're going to have blue clouds. Okay, so I'm going to streak in some white clouds on this side and maybe a couple of puffy ones on the right because I've got two, I got a, a different set of clouds and this is a, diff, a storm clouds coming in. So, and you might, this is where you would probably not want to be using a straight brush. You probably want to have a round brush so you do some more organic uh, clouds. So I'm just 
dabbing at it with pure white. I'm not going to make them really huge clouds, just streaks, because remember the storm's coming in, so it's it's pushing, it's pushing the fluffy clouds out of the way, so they're being streaked through the, the sky. I'm kind of pointing mine down at an angle. I did that on the, this one here. I'm going to use my finger a little bit too, just to kind of make them more transparent. Who doesn't love to finger paint? Get one kind of going down into the yellow. Maybe I have one over here. This is the lighter side. Okay. And then I'll have a few rogue clouds over here it got separated from the group over there yeah see how fun that is okay now I'm gonna plan out where my dark clouds are gonna go so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little streak of where this dark one's going to be coming in. So I'm going to kind of just do almost like a bat wing with my round brush. Because once you put that black on, it's going to, you know, it's going to cover up what you have below it. So this is where it's going to be coming in right here. I'm going to fill it in a little bit so you can see it. I'm just going to be putting black over it. Okay, so I'm going to have a black cloud here. I'm going to have one here pushing in. And then I'm going to have one right in here, which is hard to see my white against where I already had a white, some yellowy white in the um, background. Okay, now I'm going to dip my brush into the black, I have my black on this paper. On this plate, and I'm going to put in my black cloud. This would be fun to do in watercolor too. You could try it in a different medium or in pastel. It's been fun. I, I did a landscape class with some adults this past year. Fun to work in pastels. Okay, so there's one black cloud coming in. It's pretty ominous looking, right? Okay, I know another one's right here because I marked it. It's kind of nice to plan it out with your white so that you didn't get too heavy handed because once this goes on, you'd have, if you didn't like it, you'd have to wait till it dries and go over it because black covers everything. It is not a color. It is um, not on the color wheel. It's the absence of light, right? So I'm gonna, I don't want to forget the edges, so I'm going to pick it up and get those little edges. All right, and then I am going to put a little black down here.
Okay, so this is my cloud starting to move in, right? Okay, this is where I get to finish it off because now I'm just going to keep going with the black. I see my charcoal line under there, so I could just go ahead and outline that. Or, you know, you can change your line if you if you wanted to go higher somewhere else or lower somewhere else. Now's your chance. Okay. And now we're going to fill it up. So this is the silhouette part that I was talking about. So now my, my, my tree line is going to be dark as the sun goes down. Any objects become dark. It's nice working upright like this, so I'm not laying down on my easel and on my painting. It's really in the arm, not in the, you know, in your wrist. You're not, you know, you're moving your arm. There's my tree line. I hope you're enjoying this. This is probably one of the more simpler ones I've done in a while. I tried to mix it up. Some, are, some of my um, paintings are a little more challenging. But, you know, it's summertime. I think we can be a little more loose with it. And look at what I'm doing now. I'm filling in the shoreline or this could be where the sidewalk is you know but whatever it is it's outside the water and it's going to be dark as well you'll have to email me some ideas of what you want to paint next time what your favorite thing is. If you like still life or you like landscape. So let me know when I'm planning. Speaking of planning, remember I told you I had some exciting news to say. So we're getting back in person with a lot of classes. We are excited that we're going to be hosting in the really near future some in-person classes. Me, I'll be doing um, some evening ones. It's still daylight out, so we can do we can do some evening ones. early evening. All right, I don't want to forget the bottom, so I'm picking it up and I'm going to paint the bottom, finish it off. Even if you have a canvas that was stapled on the side, go ahead and finish it off. Sometimes I cover the stapled ones that are, that, where the staples are showing on the side. I'll cover them with a medium, like uh, it has pumice stone in it. So I'll just mix some pumice stone with my uh, acrylic paint. And it just covers right over those little uh, staples. 
I don't think they call it pumice. I just think they call it a texture medium. Golden makes it, Liquitex makes it. All right, it's just something sandy or like what you use to scrub the edge of your pool or your tiles. Breaks down pretty easily, like little granules. Yeah. Okay, so I have my shoreline. I have my tree line. I have these rolling clouds. The only thing I have left to do is to add some really cool palm trees. Or because yours could be a cacti. Cactus, cacti, depending on how many you're going to have. I have just a sliver of a palm tree coming in on this one. This one, I have more, I think I've got, just got more of the palm fronds and less of the trunk. And this one, on both of these, you can just see another palm kind of coming in on the side. So this is fun. All right, let me show you the photograph of some palms. So if you wanted to do multiple palms, you could, right? They can withstand some pretty high winds. It's amazing what palm trees can do. So we're just going to draw, you can either draw a really large trunk or no trunk and just have the fronds coming into the picture. You decide. I see that the city has something in the little chat, so make sure you read that. Um, about a survey, let us know how we're doing. Okay, I'm going to draw a palm tree. This time I'll show, I'll just show it this time. I'll be different this time. I'm going to have it in the picture. So here's my trunk. Growing up right there. Okay, there's my trunk. Look how I broke the line of the tree. Do not stop at the tree line. Go past the tree line. It will just look better, believe me. It, will, it won't look like it's got its head chopped off or that when you put the palm fronds on that they're just part of the background of the bushes in the back. You want it to look like it's in front. And so go ahead and make it taller than the background. Now, I'm using a straight uh, brush, meaning it's flat across the top to do my palm bronze. If you only have a round brush, just make sure that it's nice and clean and you don't have too much paint on it so it's not globby. That's not a word, but it doesn't have a lot of paint on it is what I'm getting at. Because we wanna make these palm fronds frilly and lightweight and we wanna feel like they're blowing in the wind. So you're gonna start with the way something grows. So I'm gonna go out and up. See that? And I'm going to make another one out and up. So I'm deciding where all the fronds are going, and then I'm going to put their little verticals on them. And I'm going to have another one coming up that way, like straight up. And maybe, let's see, do I want to have a fourth one? Maybe there's another one like that. Look how tall they are, too. Because remember, this is supposed to be in the front, like where I'm standing. So they're really tall. OK, so now I'm going to take the brush with very little paint. You may have to reload it all the time. But don't put a whole bunch on there, or you're going to get a big fat line and not a skinny line. I'm going to do it with the way it grows. So it's going to start down here. And I'm just like little soldiers. They're marching along and they're going to get smaller as they go up the spine of the frond. Do you see that? They got smaller as they went up. Okay, let's try the next one, shall we? Okay, now it's behind this one. It doesn't mean it's going to get less ability. It's just going to be behind. I can see it through this one. 
That's the nice thing about working in silhouette. You don't have to worry about them crossing over each other. And they're going to get smaller as they go up and away. Okay, let's do this one. Maybe his are going more straight down. Ding, 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 ding. You can put this in your spa room if you have a spa room. Make a spa room. Now you've got a painting. <laughs> and then we're going to have another one poking in up here. And maybe I'll have a little piece down here. This one's falling off. You know those dead, little dead parts. <laughs> okay, last but not least, I want to put on another little guy coming into the picture. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna use the, the wide part of my brush. And push down and then I'm going to turn to the side of my brush to make it thinner. So in one stroke, you're going from wide to thin. What I'm going to draw, do it again. So I'm going from wide to the to turning it on its side to make it thin out to the tippy tippy tip of the uh, palm frond. Now I'm going to, with a little bit of black that I have left, I'm going to put a little bit of shadow in some of my white hats, just a tad. Remember, black goes a long way, so just use it sparingly. And fill in anything that needed a second coat on your black. If you have some, I call them holidays, like where I skipped and I've got some white showing through. I'll just put some more black in there. And if this is the point where you think you needed another cloud, you could add another cloud. Or you think your sky got too muddy, you could, you know, put some blue back in your sky. But isn't this just as nice as a photograph? It's very dreamy, isn't it? I'm going to check my side because I need to finish this palm crown over here. So he doesn't look like he's some rocket or something out there. And I'm going to cover that over there. Okay. And last but not least, I need to sign my name. I always think it's important to sign your name, even if you're thinking you'll never put it anywhere. Because most of you say, oh, I'm going to just stick it in the closet. Well, for all you closet dwellers, you still should have your name on it. I think it's a good um, indicator of how you progress. So if you do another one and another one, you can see uh, who did it, right? And if you dated it, you would even know when you did it and how your, your style might have changed. So. Okay, so I'm going to sign mine in white. Or you could use red. I always put my name too a little bit into the picture frame, as in don't put it on the tippy edge, because if you do frame it, it'll get buried. There is my name. A little trick too, like if your tubes are getting a little low, see, I mean, I'm about squeezed all my blue out of this. I take my scissors and I snip off. So here's a full tube. I snip off the end. And then I can squeeze that little bit of blue out that I need. It's just going to seal back over, right? It's going to seal over um, itself. It's acrylic paint. And then next time I can cut it again. Use some scissors that you don't care if they when they get paint on them. Like I have a pair that I don't use for anything else. You can also roll it like a um, tube of toothpaste, you know, to try to get it to come out this end. But there could be times when 
you don't even have the top anymore. It won't even screw on anymore. So that's why it's nice to be able to clip it. Okay. So there's upcoming classes in person. I'm not sure exactly of the dates yet, but stay tuned to that. That's going to be fun. Uh, you can submit your art to me uh, if in the form of email or to the city where you got the link to this particular um, video. And it can be part of an online gallery that we can all look at together. And um, if you have any questions about how we did this today, feel free to email me. Just put Deborah at DeborahBullyArt.com or you can look in the chat and you can see it. If you missed any part or you want to redo it with your family tonight or tomorrow over the weekend, just go to the City of Good Years Arts and Culture YouTube channel and you can find this lesson and about 20 more. And so you'll have fun doing that. So I enjoyed painting with you today. I always do. And uh, if you want to share something with me now, if you want to like hold it up, I can see it. You know, you could put your...